Live. Uh, here we are. You know that I immediately uh, remember once I was hosting a conference. Actually, it was in Kiev. So it's, it's like an interesting connection that I just did and was a speaker that I had to introduce. I was like the MC. And I said, and now a big round of applause for uh, Matt. And everyone looked at me weird saying, Matt, who is Matt? And everyone say, Matt. And, but for me, that I'm Italian, Matt, Matt is the same. So I, I, I have a problem with names. So tell me how okay. do I we spell it correctly? Matt, or, uh, that's, that's totally fine. We have a lot of uh, Italian friends at, at Satellite. And uh, I would be lying if I said that I began to pronounce their names uh, properly. So <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend uh, that, that after, I think, one year, i said, um, uh, Jacob, how are you, Jacob? And then after one year, he said, man, my friend is Jacob. It's not Jacob, it's Jacob. <laughs> I kind of like Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm so um, interested to, to talk with you because um, <clears throat> there is this topic about um, the new, let's say, Web3 tools mm -hmm. and uh, everyone... Uh, um, having a project in, into the Web3 world. For instance, we have a, an NFT and we use a, a platform like Discord. And um, at the beginning, I said, oh, wow, cool. You know, Discord, Web3 tool. But then you start to dig a bit and say, but what happened if they, you know, shut down, freeze our account, you know? And, right, and right. You, you say, well, it's not so uh, Web3, it's not so decentralized, it's like a PHB bulletin. I don't know what was the name, the forum. You remember the old time yeah, forum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I think definitely there is a problem there. And what you do, guys, I think can help to improve the situation. But give me first the context of uh, what are you fo focusing right now uh, and, and what you're doing right now. Yeah, um, we're kind of we're trying to build a decentralized chat service um, and a goal of ours kind of touches on um, the the major concern of having things be shut down. And um, we kind of centered our development process around having no mandatory servers. So um, essentially our platform runs, you could run it off a USB drive, you could run it off of IPFS, whatever. Um, and once it's up, we can't shut it down. No one could shut it down. Um, and that's kind of been a goal of ours since the beginning. So um, the only server we have is an optional signaling server. Other than that, it's totally in the user's control. Um, and it really kind of gets away from that, you know, what if this gets shut down? What if this ceases to exist? Even if we cease to exist as a company, um, satellite communities will continue to exist. Um, wow. And we totally built on top of Web3 and peer-to-peer -peer tech. Um, and I think a big focus of ours as well has been um, kind of trying to break through that Web3 mold of how do we do this in a way that is totally Web3 native, totally crypto native, but isn't something that you need to understand crypto to, to use the platform. Um, and also that the quality remains the same, you know, no, no shade thrown on other projects or anything like that, but frequently we sacrifice a lot for security and privacy. Um, but we've kind of done a 180 with satellite. We've been able to do, um, 4k at 60 FPS, um, video chat actually wow. from here in, uh, North Carolina, all the way to Milan, um, with, with no packet loss or, or anything like that. So, um, really that's been our goal is just building something that, that is owned by the community. That's, that's really impressive because one concern that I have, if I think about uh, launching a star, I, I, I'm, I launched several startups and uh, small, small startups, but um, I thought, well, yeah, I, I could launch some kind of decentralized startup. But then I start to be worried about um, the, the speed because I start to think, mm, if it's decentralized, how fast can it go? Right, or right. if I have to patch something, we did a mistake and every, every two seconds you do a mistake as a startup, then how do I change it if it's already written with, with blood in the blockchain? So I have all of this kind of concern. What, how do you solve this? Or is maybe my stupid concern because I'm ignorant about it? No, it's a valid concern. And I think, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things where you kind of have these ledgers that you trust to push updates to the platform. Um, that could be us. That could be someone in the community that forked our code. Um, it could be essentially anyone. And you have to know who to trust to get those updates. So that's kind of the trade-off in crypto, right, is because this application isn't living on an AWS server, we can't just push updates and then, you know, someone goes to yeah. satellite and then boom, all the updates are there. Um, you're really kind of dependent on trusting um, you know, a certain group of people to push those updates. But 
you know, it, the beauty of something like Git is you can, you know, if you're technically savvy or if you have friends that are technically savvy, you can go in and, and dig into any part of our code base. You know, it's all public. It's all open source. Um, so really all we're doing is updating our Git repositories. And then we have different nodes that host the actual application. So hopefully everything will be seamless. Got it. When you say that you have to trust um, uh, some people to push the updates, you mean there are some nodes and then you have to trust the fact that these nodes have uh, enough uh, reward or incentive to push the updates? I think it's, yeah, it, it's it's not necessarily like the traditional node like you would see on like a miner or something like that where they're incentivized. It's more just, you know, someone can compile our application down and then host it on a pinata um, pin or an IPFS or, or you know, um, uh, you know, an Unstoppables domains, whatever. Um, it, it's really just, you know, and it's a thing with crypto inherently is that a lot of times there's a store of value on those applications. So you really just have to know, you know, what authorities have your best interests at heart. Um, and I think that's something that really, as a community, we need to take a shift into is making sure we're cognizant of our security and privacy um, and kind of say, you know, I'm not just going to go to any website that looks like satellite and trust it. You know, let me check the domain. Let me check and make sure it's pulling from the right uh, Git repository. Um, and I think it's just a paradigm shift in people needing to be cognizant of their um, surroundings in the Web3 space. Right. Uh, there is a, a massive uh, issue in Discord at the moment. I'm just mentioning Discord because it's like the, the tool that every um, sure, project sure. use. Um, and the, there is this scam issue with direct message, which is uh, unreal in my opinion. I mean, coming from Web2, every day you have to say, don't use a feature which is now common for basically you can't use Twitter direct messages if you have certain following Instagram direct messaging. I mean, it's impossible to use this feature, but on Discord is, uh, uh, I would say, has reached a level of, um, of uh, organized crime uh, <laughs> ability, yeah, which yeah. is unreal. I have some scams to my NFTs that I don't understand if I've written. I, I, they are genius. They write so well, great stuff. I would hire them but they right, are on right. the dark side of the force. So you can't use direct message and, and you, you don't know what to do. I cannot you know, go to the police. I cannot, I, how do I stop them? So you can only say to your users, look, turn off direct messages, but many users maybe are not aware and they got scammed um, ferociously. H how do you think it's possible to solve this problem? Yeah, I think this is something we've been thinking about and we haven't come up with the exact solution yet, but um, we've kind of been toying around with the idea of relationship graphs. So if I know you and you know me, then we could say that, you know, we share these two keys. We know these are our real addresses. We know that we are who we say we are. Um, and we could kind of build on top of that and start building a graph of all these different people that we know and we trust. And instead of just opening DMs to everyone, you instead open your DMs to people in this relationship network. So, you know, you, it's not just some random account that was created by a bot and, you know, send some pretty message that looks very, you know, uh, uh, legitimate. Instead, we can say, okay, well, this is a friend of a friend of a friend, and they've been vetted by six or 10 or 20 different people. Um, and from that, we can build a trust network. So that's something right. we're kind of looking into. We're not there yet, um, but I think it's a very valid concern. And it's something that is rampant, not only in Discord, but YouTube and all social media. You yeah. know, you see it on Twitter and everything as well. And Frankly, it's it's something that, especially in the crypto space, I think it, it gives crypto a bad name um, because a lot of people's first interactions with crypto are through these scams, right? They go yeah. on Twitter, they, they check out some posts and then it's, hey, the, you know, it's me, Vitalik Buterin, I'm, I'm sending out like 10 ETH if you send me this <laughs> ETH back. And it, it's just, it, 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 it really puts a bad image for us. So it's something that's really important to us to, to try to solve. Um, and I think that relationship graph can really help out um, in solving, you know, cutting back a lot of those scam messages. Of course, someone could still get their account hacked and they can still, you know, uh, be compromised. But if we can cut that down by even 70%, it would be monumental compared to- Monumental, to yeah. Also, because at the moment, the alternatives that I see are, okay, let's um, increase the level of verification. And there are some 
Discord servers that you need the MIT uh, <laughs> degree to enter because right. the verification is impossible. You have to solve. You have to be Manus Carson chess master to solve the puzzle. You have three seconds to do fifteen things simultaneously. So it's impossible like that. It has to be something that that works. Uh, let's do a step back, uh, Matt. W- what's your background? Um, do you have like a coding background? Is a business background? Yeah, I think um, much like yourself, I, I have a um, background in content creation um, that right. goes pretty far back. Um, actually, when I was around 13 or 14, um, I was working with a Minecraft hosting company um, who went on to create something called Beam Pro, which later was right. rebranded to Mixer and sold to Microsoft. And I didn't get anything from it wow. because I was 13 okay. and, and I was I was ignorant to... Uh... And it was no Web3 tokenized system, so <laughs> sure, that's it. Sure. Web3 was, you know, that was just a, a, a blip in the, the, the map at the time. So I, uh, yeah, I, I, I was around that space for a long time and um, trying to find different ways to, to help these content creators, you know, on my own um, platforms, on their platforms, really, how do we get high fidelity audio um, without packet loss and without having to... Um, you know, bring these people on and have them record a separate audio track on their computer and send it over and things like that. And that's kind of how Satellite was actually birthed was from that background. Um, additionally, I spent some time in the crypto space working with exchanges like Shapeshift, um, helping them out with, um, I was actually on the Prism team, which was super beneficial. It was a blast to meet everyone there. Um, and, you know, it kind of uh, uh, shifted my interest in the tech space completely. I went from Um, boring government work to the exact opposite, you know, freedom fighting crypto work. So um, it was a huge shift and I, I'm so glad it happened. And, you know, I kind of try to mesh the two worlds together and that's kind of how I ended up where I am today. Fantastic. And and what's the stage of satellite at the moment? Uh, where is it? Is like, uh, j- just to, to um, I'm thinking people that maybe are not aware of it is, uh, is an MVP. You already got traction. Uh, what what's the level of the development there? Yeah, we recently closed our Series A, so we're, we're well-funded. Um, we have um, a huge, awesome team. I, I think about half of our developers are actually from Italy um, uh, over in a, a group called Knobs, and they're, they're excellent. Everyone's super passionate. And um, from that, we've built a MVP. Um, you can actually go on and use the product for direct messaging, um, file sharing, and things like that. Um, we're pushing towards an early access launch. Um, that should be within the next 20 days or so. Um, and that will feature everything but community servers. Um, we're also working towards a minimal kind of Telegram-esque platform called Uplink. Um, and essentially the goal of that is going to be a hyper secure platform with 4K video streaming, um, high fidelity audio, um, but stripping out most of the extra features, you know, kind of targeting more of the audience that uses Facebook Messenger or something like that, yeah. you know, something you can get your mom using or, or your, you know, your um, your older friends using and they're not going to be confused and really just taking sort of, um, of WhatsApp, Web3 WhatsApp, something like that. Exactly, exactly. And really with the goal of how do we get people interested in privacy and security without them even knowing that they're, you know, using something that's hyper secure and hyper private. And um, that's hopefully going to launch in the next three months here. So we're making uh, we're making headway and there's there's plenty of tools as well for developers to start building on our platform already. Um, and Probably. really we're full steam ahead. So. Oh, wow, impressive. And how many people is uh, Satellite at the moment? What, what's the size of the company? I would say about 37 employees. Um, so we have, uh, most of us are developers. Um, we've really tried to stay developer focused at the company. Um, we do have, you know, our back office staff, but really most of the people we hired were people that were contributing open source or, you know, became interested through like Gitcoin or something like that. Um, really, we just brought on people that were, Uh, passionate about the space and that we're equally interested in making this product. Um, I don't think there's anyone at our company that treats it as like a daily job where they sign in and sign out and just, you know, head out for the oh. day. Everyone's here because they're, they're super jazzed about Web3 and crypto and um, what we're building. So, Got it. Uh, when you talk about security, help me to understand uh, um, what, what's the level of security of like WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal, Uh, Discord, uh, satellite. What what's the difference there? Because for normal human beings, they more or less all the same. So what's sure, the sure. difference? There? Why is important? What what has to change to make it more secure and and so on? 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, at a entry level, you have something that's very much not secure. Um, and that is more for the discords of the world um, where you don't have end to end encrypted messages. You're sending everything up to their servers in plain text. So, you know, if, you know, a, a very common thing for better or worse is for people to send, hey, like, can I log into your Netflix, right? Or something like that. And they send the yeah. password over plain text. Yeah. And then now your password is available to everyone um, if Discord servers are compromised. Um, so that's like the very, very, you know, horrible uh, level of security. Um, you have applications that include end-to-end -end encryption, but it's still going up to their central servers. So although they can't read your messages, they still know exactly who you're talking to. Um, you know, you, you can be sort of pinned down as a marketing number. You could start targeting ads to certain demographics and groups. Um, and we've taken it to the most extreme where we're end-to-end -end encrypted across the board, but the messages never go to any of our servers. The messages go straight from one user to another user, or they go straight from one user to the chain and they're encrypted on the chain. Nobody can ever read those messages except for the recipient, the intended recipient of those messages. So, yeah. um, that's really the, the ultimate goal is to make it so no matter what happens, you know, even if the data is leaked, um, it doesn't matter. And with the blockchain, it's inherently public in a lot of regards. So, you know, we've kind of been forced to make sure that our stuff is hyper secure um, because a lot of that stuff is public, publicly accessible. Um, so it's really just a matter of taking every step of the process and saying, how do we make total ownership of this data um, in the user's hands and how do we right. make sure that that user doesn't have to think about how to secure their data it's just something that happens inherently with using the application i see i am um super interested in um uh, security um decentralization ownership most of all um I, I, i've worked for nine years now on several social media platforms and i don't own shit basically so that, that that's incredible so i have a large community and i have someone in between that decide okay you get this rich or maybe we freeze your account because we hate bold people starting tomorrow i don't know so anything can happen uh, but i have good intentions so i just want to have a relationship with my community and uh, i'm happy to pay but i don't want to be you know shut down or uh, intermediate basically the problem uh, that I see in the discussion about these topics is every time that someone say, yes, but what about bad actors? Because bad actors will come and say, all right, good. Um, how do you stop uh, like a discord full of bad actors? Uh, well, they can shut down the server and they can, they can freeze those accounts, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. What happened with uh, decentralized let's say, social networks, decentralized messaging system. Uh, how do you approach this kind of problem? Yeah, it, it, that's a tough one. And it's really, um, you know, a political belief issue and, and kind of an opinionated thing. But um, this is my personal opinion, um, is there's a reason we don't live in glass houses, right? I could be doing something, um, you know, that the government or someone might think is bad in my house, but... That doesn't mean that there should be cameras in my house just in case I am, right? That, yeah. You know, likely I'm not. I'm just a normal citizen. I'm just going about my day. That doesn't mean I should have to forgo my privacy just because I might be doing something um, nefarious. However, um, there is something that we've been thinking about. And it's kind of, you know, it's one of those things we really need to spend a lot of time on because I think it is a touchy subject. But we've been thinking about allowing people to opt into our own um kind of uh ban network so essentially um satellite and a bunch of other community members can come together and build a network of things that say hey you know this group is specifically a hate group that's that's all they do is that you know they spread hate and they're a terrible community so i personally would not like to see their content um so they can turn on this content filter and allow us as satellite to say hey we haven't found anything really worthwhile in here. This is just, you know, a bad group to be a part of. In our personal opinion, you can turn on our filtering and we'll get that server out of there. But at the same way, you know, in the same way that kind of goes into the Discord thing of 
if we're the ones that decide what is a bad actor, you know, that could cause problems in the future. So it's important that this is something that people can opt out of or they can change to a different, um, you know, registry to choose what may be bad actors or disable it completely. It, it's really a tough subject, right? And it's something that we're going to spend a lot of time on. Um, and I think outside of just messaging, um, the Web3 space entirely, it's something that we have to think about as a community is how do we control this data? Do we even want to control this data? Um, do we want to allow it to be completely open and see what happens? Do we want to trust certain authorities to be the ones to, to shut things down? It's really something I think as a community, not just inside of satellite, we need to kind of think about yeah. and perhaps there's a protocol layer that, that could exist there or, or you know, uh, it, it's just something I think a lot of thought needs to be put into because it really is like the overarching problem in crypto, right? It's what everyone yeah. thinks about, like when they when you talk about crypto. It's interesting because on one side, if I think about social networks, of course, as a creator, as a company, as a media, I don't like this, this idea to be, you know, to have seven companies deciding what's good, what's bad. So this is uh, this is wrong and they can turn on, turn off. On the other side, I understand that, you know, when something really goes viral and is very bad, if you have the possibility to turn it down and say, look, this content is absolutely unacceptable, the central uh, network and, and there is this big topic. Yeah, I think ultimately um, it just comes down to letting the user be the one to make that decision, right? Um, if they want to opt into content filtering from a certain organization, they can. Um, if they don't want to, then they, they, they shouldn't be forced to either. And really, I think it's, it's a solution as a whole we're going to have to think about as a community. Um, really, we're all on the same team here in, in the Web3 space. You know, we've grown a lot, but we're, we're still a niche community. So I think it's something um, yeah. as a community we should think about and keep in the back of our heads as we're building. Maybe this idea of uh, bring your own algorithm uh, makes sense so that you can say, look, I want you know this filter, I, will, I want Zuck filter, I want uh, CNN filter, I want Trump filter, I, I want no filter, I don't know. So, and then you can somehow decide uh, yeah, these uh, all sound like nightmare filters, but uh, <laughs> hopefully yeah. we can we can uh, we can narrow it down and said I want Monty filter, I want Matt filter, yeah. you know, um, stay away from the corporations and, you know, build filters together as communities, perhaps in the same kind of um, relationship graph we talked about earlier. Um, I think that may be a, a good approach. That's interesting because, uh, for instance, if you in satellite have like a Monty filter, I can suggest, you know, all the um, servers that are interesting, in my opinion. And if you trust my taste or my experience or my opinion, then you say, all right, cool. I, I get that list. I, you know, I trust that that person. And so the, the graph, the social graph starts from there. So it could be good. Interesting. What, what do you think are the main features missing in something like Discord at the moment? Um, I think ownership of data is the most glaring issue. Um, uh, being able to get away from the uh, kind of ownership that, that Discord places, not, a, not only over the data, but access to that data um, is something that's massive. Um, I think for the Web3 community, it's, it's fairly obvious that there's a lot of solutions that we've kind of had to hack together in the community to make Web3 fit into Discord. Um, so if you want to integrate NFTs, if you want to integrate, um, you know, some other protocol, it's kind of difficult. Um, and that goes even outside of Web3. If you want to, let's say you're like, oh, I don't really like this theme. You can't even apply a custom theme to Discord without breaking their terms of service. So um, extensibility in general has been something that we've really focused on. Um, in building our platform. And I think that's something that's missing in a lot of social spaces. Um, and this comes from my gaming background. You know, if you look at the games that succeed and that have been um, around for so long and still continue to be around, you look at things like Skyrim, you look at things like Minecraft, it's because the community can build those games to be bigger and better on their own. And that's kind of something we focused on in Satellite is allow users to go ahead and let's say they want to put in, um, you know, an embedded link to a stream in the in this community server, they can do that. They don't have to have a bot that just pastes some text that says so and so is now live, you know, you can just go in and actually um, make your community part of your community. Um, and that goes outside of just things like live streaming. If you're someone that has an NFT, um, allow people to browse the NFTs that you offer in your community server, allow them to show 
the different platforms that your NFT is accepted in um, and really just let the community run wild with it. Don't try to control what they want to do with your platform. Kind of plant the seed and and, and see what grows from the community um, is kind of been our mindset. So I think that's something that is monumental to any successful platform that we don't really see a lot in the social space in general. You know, you kind of you get this toolkit and that's what you're given. You might you know, be so crazy as to get something like TweetDeck. And that's like, whoa, this is totally different. But <laughs> that's sort of like all you get, right? So we're really focusing on that extensibility and allowing the users to build whatever the heck they want with our platform and, you know, take ownership of it, not just from the data, but from the actual technical platform itself as well. Sort of WordPress with the plugin ecosystem and themes ecosystem, and that was the key, app, the killer app for WordPress to to grow because so many developers started to build a business. Exactly, exactly, awesome. and that's like beautiful, right? You know, if we if we come to work tomorrow and someone has built an extension like Better Satellite, and it's like so much better than what we've done, like that's <laughs> awesome. Like that's that's awesome. That's not a bad thing. Like that, you know, our, our platform is grown outside of our control. And I don't think people should be scared of that. I don't think companies should be scared of that. So you mentioned NFT and gaming and immediately in my head, Bluff <laughs> started this uh, uh, Yuga Labs uh, deck. I, I, I was reading the leaked uh, Yuga Labs deck. And I found it very fascinating. First, because uh, you mentioned you had uh, um, uh, an A round. They had basically a seed round for 450 million, 11 Jeez. employees for 4 billion valuation. <laughs> that was their seed round. The second interesting thing is that, um, imagine I come to you, Matt, and I say, I've got a genius idea. I'm going to do some apes, NFTs, and I'll build a mega business out of there. And then we'll, we'll be the meta, we'll build a, a, a metaverse and, and a game inside there and a token economy. You say, what do you are out of your mind? What are you talking about? So th the way you build brand now that you start from the community, the community create uh, the culture, the lifestyle, and then you build the brand from there. Is, is very fascinating against any business school uh, teaching that you can get. Yeah, I, I think personally, that's like something I'm kind of opinionated on. And I think it's an interesting approach and it's, it's definitely exciting, but I think it leads to a lot of problems. And I think that kind of leads to the distrust that a lot of non-crypto enthusiasts have in the space, right? Is you come up with an idea and your idea is suddenly worth 400 million dollars you know two billion dollars whatever um and maybe it never gets built maybe a bunch of people say oh wow you just raised all this money it's got to be big and then you sink you know your, yeah. your college funds and everything into it and then suddenly it never comes to be so i think it's an interesting space and it's it's great that it is so easy to grow and innovate in this space but i think that's something we have to be cognizant as well is how do we kind of balance these things and and not just live off of hype because i think that's a really big problem in the crypto space right now is is people buy into hype and then yeah. they start telling their family members at, at uh, holidays oh buy this buy that buy that and it just again it leads to a, a bad name in the space you know we don't see um people going out and and telling everyone to buy stocks in like my sequel or MongoDB because like it's right. going to be the next big tech thing, right? Like I think we really need to focus on the product and bringing people in um, and kind of get away from that hype. That's that's my personal opinion because I think yeah. it's hurting us more than it's helping us. I, I, I totally agree. Um, it's like, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm old enough and I, I remember, yeah, 15 years ago, basically you were judging, yeah, 20 years ago now, actually it's more, uh, you were judging startups only on, on pitch deck. So they go right. to the slides and say, all right, I'll build e-commerce, uh, gigantic company. This is my growth, 300 trillion in uh, five years. Wow, yeah, let's get, let's get the money. And uh, same thing. And now if you think about startups, if you go to a VC or even an angel investor, they, they don't even want to know your idea. They want to see, you know, like some traction, show me mm -hmm. something, uh, how many customers you have, you know, ideas. I don't even talk about ideas. I can do a PowerPoint. So... Uh, but in, in crypto land, it's still like that, which is uh, on one side is crazy. I agree with you. On the other side, uh, some companies, they get this uh, 
hype, the interest from the community, the money, and then they are able to execute with the with the money and the community they have. So at the end is a self-fulfilling prophecy or something like that, maybe. Right, right. Yeah, and, and I think that we'll grow out of it. I think it's something that a lot of people in the crypto space are realizing is like kind of like uh, the bad thing that, that we have going on right now. Um, and I think as we continue to grow, as Web3 becomes the web and, and not, you know, some niche Web3 thing, not crypto, it's just... You know, I think we need to get to the point where it's not, oh, this is a crypto company. It's, oh, this is a company. They're leveraging Web3 tech. That's cool. But what we really care about is the product they're delivering. Um, yeah. I think we'll get there. But I think we're still in the early stages um, where everyone doesn't want to miss out. So they're just investing in everything and anything. Yeah, so. I agree. It, it should be invisible. I, I, I don't even want to know if you use blockchain or what. Right, I just right. know what are the benefits for me what are the consequences of your technology i don't care what what you use but give me some the principles that you have the values that you have if i agree with those values and you deliver on that i'll i'll, I'll pick your product then you know discord or or something else so probably this is a this is the thing what what are some trends that you see that you say monty look in the next 12 months probably this is something that that is going to to be interesting or keep an eye on this. Is it anything that you that you focusing on at the moment? Yeah, I think that's hard for me to say. And I, I kind of I I stay out of trying to predict the future and kind of try to live in in the present. But I think one thing that I see, and it's something that um has kind of been on my radar for a while now in the NFT space. And this is something that like I've been met with like you know, total agreeance or like people are like, no, 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 I hate this. But I think a lot of the NFT projects that exist right now, they're like on the tip of something great, right? They're, they're almost there, but they're just not pushing the, the use case of the NFT over the edge. Um, and I think that's something that we're hopefully going to see start to evolve in the next, you know, year or so is instead of just making an NFT that is a receipt of, you know, hey, I own this like sick, like profile picture, like, whatever like personally i i could care less about something like that but if we see nfts that are saying hey i own this sick profile picture it's also an awesome character in this video game it's also a emoji pack in satellite or a sticker pack in satellite it's also this i think the transmutability of these items and and these nfts is something that i'm personally looking forward to and i think that's where people are going to kind of break the mold in the nft space um, and instead of using them for these one-off things where they exist only for one purpose, taking the power of them and making them um, adaptable between many different communities, I think that's something I'm really keeping on my radar. Um, and that's something that I'm kind of betting on personally in satellite and making sure that we can adopt is how do we take these things that, you know, for the non-crypto users seem so silly because it's just a picture with a digital receipt. How do we take the power of that and actually make realize it and, and bring it to um, its full potential? I think that's that's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Very interesting. Um, I, I think also the all the utility NFT direction NFTs with real utilities uh, that give you access to to stuff. I've interviewed recently uh, Patrick Muratoglu, a um, very famous tennis coach. Serena Williams tennis coach and he's launching his NFTs, uh, um, they have nothing to do with art. It's only a pass to his tennis academy. You can play certain tournaments, you can have access to you know, a top player. So you use NFT as a, as a key to enter his uh, universe. And, and I think it's, it's, it's very interesting. What about skills uh, and people that you want to hire for satellite? or um, skills that you think in Web3 are really in high demand and maybe you, you have problem to find those kind of people. Uh, where do you recommend to focus uh, for people who want to find a uh, job into this world? Yeah, I think really the most valuable thing is just being able to be self-taught and be able to push yourself to learn on your own. I think personally, when, when we've hired for satellite, we don't really care if you're the best in the field at a certain thing. Um, you know, if you're the best JavaScript developer, if you're the best Rust developer, whatever, that doesn't really matter. I think what's important is that you're the kind of person that's going to go out and do research and find out, you know, what is the next, you know, new thing. Um, 
not only in the development world, but especially in the crypto world, things are changing overnight. And if you're somebody who you know can't go out and research the latest thing on your own, I think that's going to make you struggle. But if you just click that thing over in your head that makes it say, hey, I'm going to go on Reddit or I'm going to go wherever and I'm going to research and figure out what might be the next you know, big new piece of tech that I should learn tomorrow. I think that's invaluable. Um, right. I think you know, no one should be discouraged if they're not the best XYZ developer. Like That doesn't matter. What, what matters is that you're self-motivated and that you can go out and further your, your knowledge on your own um, and, and kind of problem solve and, and research on your own. What's your media diet? How do you keep updated on all of the things that have happened? Well, I'm so stressed because as soon as I finish, after 50 minutes we, we spoke, everything will be already different. You know, new tools, new things. Oh, gosh, do you see Monty? No, it happened three seconds ago. <laughs> Yeah, strangely enough, um, I would say things like Telegram communities, Discord communities, um, you know, uh, I'm sure you find in your own community, a lot of people just talk. And really, the best way to figure out what people are interested in is talking to people. Um, so, you know, I'll go on Reddit, I'll try to see what's trending. But generally, it'll be through friends, or it'll be through um, business partners, or just joining communities and talking. It's really just about networking and, and you know, uh, who knows, like, that's how ideals uh, are born as well. You know, you might go into your community and start talking about, oh, this is a cool thing. Like, oh, we could totally build this on that. Hey, let's build this on that. Like, it's really just about talking to people, talking to the community. Um, and I think that's part of why I'm so passionate about satellite is really it kind of grows more satellites, more projects, you know, um, more uh, experiments and inventions. It's, it's really just about talking to other people, other human beings, and not getting all your information from a single news source. I see. To, to recap the, the, the main uh, next steps for uh, uh, satellite, uh, uh, what do I expect to, to see in the next 12 months from, uh, from satellite? Uh, and, and how can I um, follow you? Where is the best place to follow or where is the best place to, to test and, 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 and try everything? Yeah, we're, um, we're developing live on uh, satellite.im. Uh, that's our, our website. Um, we've been transparent the whole way um, from the point where it's just like a single page with some components all the way to where it's at now. Um, if you're interested in following along, you know, some users, it might be a little bit too buggy, but dev.satellite.one is our hosted repo of the project. Um, you can just go on and, and check it out. Um, we're also on um, Twitter and uh, we have a Discord community right now that eventually will have a big herd and migrate over. Um, but uh, in the next 12 months, we hope to have a full feature release of not only um, the core product, which is the satellite product with community servers, extensions, um, the NFT marketplace, everything like that, um, but also Uplink, which is um, really we're building it to try to connect our family. Um, you know, uh, my mom isn't going to use discord. Well, she does now because I forced her to, but it was, uh, God. quite the, the struggle to get her to use it. So we're building something that hopefully, um, you can connect with your family members on and it won't be so confusing for them. It's not sensory overload, but at the same time, it's super secure and it'll, you know, feature our four gig file uploads, 4k video, everything like that, um, in a minimal mobile application. So, uh, in the next 12 months, expect to be able to hop on and use a, a full feature complete application and, you know, maybe, uh, start thinking about building your own extensions on a uh, satellite and, you know, how, how you can utilize it for your community. That sounds great. Uh, what about uh, a token? Every time now that I, I, um, I'm on a website, the first thing, it changed completely since Web2. Every time I think, oh, do they have a token? Oh, that's interesting. I would buy the token. <laughs> What's the situation there? Is it, I don't know if it's a public uh, thing that you can- Yeah, no, we could, we could talk about it. So um, we are going to do a token offering, but we've really made it a point that um, we want to have the product first. Um, we don't want to be one of these companies that gets way more money than we could ever know it. what to do with yeah. before we build the product. Um, so we'll build the product. We'll have people testing it for a while. Um, once we release 1.0 of our application, then we'll start thinking about the token. Um, and it'll essentially be a membership token for our product. So instead of four gig uploads, if you want 100 gig uploads or something like that, um, you'll have direct utility with this token. So Uh, really just avoiding, you know, we, we didn't want to be one of those companies that just grabs a bunch of money that we don't even know how to spend it yet. 
So I, lo I love the approach. Also, because in general, when you have a lot of money, then you start to do very stupid things. And uh, yeah. I, yeah. I'm watching, uh, I don't know if you're watching the series, uh, We Crashed, the We Work no, uh, story. It. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's one interesting example. But uh, um, final question I was curious about, you were talking um, about investors before. Mm -hmm. What's the, the feedback from your experience about investors in this moment in the space? Is something that when you arrive and say Web3, They say, oh, I love it. <laughs> Let me give you money. Is something that is, um, mm, I don't know, unless uh, you go to specialized crypto funds or Web3 funds. What, what's the environment out there? Yeah, it's a mixed bag. If you talk to traditional investors, um, in 2017, I actually uh, was, was working to launch a different startup and It was kind of the opposite. You know, you, you mentioned crypto and then suddenly the room goes quiet um, and they're like, oh, you know, I don't know about that. Like, oh, how are we going to put like yeah. money in the bank? Like, ooh, are you going to do a token? That sounds like a security. So, you know, so it was it was very different back then. Um, and some of my investors watching may hate me for this, but there's certainly investors in the Web3 space that as soon as you talk about the fact that it's something with crypto, they're like, all right, here's some money, here's some money. But we've um, we've really made a point to, to go with the people who are not quick to just throw us money. And that sounds counterintuitive, but a lot of our investors kind of drive us forward. And I think that's important. You need to have um, a fire under your butt, right? To, to do good. Yeah. And if they're just throwing you money uh, and you, you just, you don't need to work to get that money, you're not going to build a better product. You're going to sit on it and say, oh, well, we all have jobs for the next five years. So who cares? You know, you need to have that fire. Um, and I, I would encourage anyone starting a business or a company in the Web3 space to Do yourself a favor and look for the ones that are going to be critical of you. Look for the ones that are going to give you a hard time because they're going to make you successful in the long run. Love it, Matt. Well, such a pleasure to talk with you. Satellite.im, guys, if you want to have a look, keep an eye. You'll be on my radar, so I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> and we'll be very interesting. Good luck for, uh, for everything and uh, just keep in touch. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.